So say I get something like this, which is what you're going to start seeing more often. It's two modular equations, but where is this one less than this one? So I want you to think about it like this. Without any given any specifics, here's two modular equations, right? f of x and g of x. And if I was to ask you, where was f of x less than g of x? Well, let's look there. There's f of x, the blue graph, and here's g of x, the red graph. Now, in like real simple terms, what I'm asking you is, where is f of x below g of x? Where is it less than g of x? Now, we can see here that f of x, as we come along from the right, it's here, it's here, it's here. Now, as soon as it crosses over here, then it goes above g of x graph. But all this stuff here, all up to here, so from all the way up until we hit this point here, it's actually underneath g of x. Even though f of x goes like really high back up this way, this also goes really high. This has gone really high, like if like be up above it, it's always going to be above. It's always going to be looking down on that f of x graph there. Whereas now, when f of x crosses over, it's always going to be looking down on g of x. So all the values from here, all the way up as far as this value right here is where f of x is going to be below g of x. So when we say something like this, there are a set of values that exist here. Even though they're both always positive, there is a way of finding out where this graph is actually below that graph. So here somewhere we'd have to square out these two things here to solve it. Because if there's too much going on negative and positive wise, so what we'd have to do is square both sides. So we're going to square both sides first. So to square both sides, to square the left hand side here. So what I do is just square the first part. I multiply the two of them, 3x by 4, that's 12x, I double that, that gives me 24x, square 4, I get 16. Where's that less than or equal to, same thing here, square the first part, x squared, multiply the two of them, 2x, double that, 4x, square the last part, 4, right? Now I have a um, quadratic equation of some sort. I still have a, an inequality, but that's okay. We can move these things over, right? We're not multiplying or dividing that negative, so it's not going to switch this. We're just going to bring these terms over. So 9x squared minus the x squared is going to give us 8x squared. 4x minus from the 24x is going to give us 20x. And then 4 from the 16 is going to give us 12. And leaves us with less than or equal to 0. Yeah, all these things seem to be divisible by four, so that's a positive number. So again, we're not going to do anything to this inequality. So divide here by four gives us this, and this will give us this, and this one will give us three less than or equal to zero. So now it turns out, right, I have this quadratic equation, and I want to know where it's less than zero. So even though I've come away from these two modular equations, essentially the set of solutions that exist for this are the same set of solutions that exist for this. So I can just think about this, and we've done a lot of these. This is a positive quadratic graph. It looks something like this. It might look exactly like that, but just for sketch purposes. Where's that below zero? Well, when we find these two points here, we get the set of solutions in here, and these are solutions where it dips below zero. So let's find these two dots. What do we know these two dots to be? These are the roots. So let's open two brackets here and see if we can figure it out. If you can't figure out using the two brackets, remember you can go to minus b here, but that's okay. So we're looking to know where these actually equal to zero, right? I could probably change that e to an equal symbol today or whatever. So yeah, to solve this, we go here, a, a plus one and a plus three, okay? So when we solve these two roots, well, we want to know where they're equal to zero, remember. So where is two x plus three? I didn't need this bracket. Equal to zero. That's 2x is equal to minus 3. So here's one root where x is equal to minus 3 over 2. And another root simply where x plus 1 is equal to 0. That's where x is equal to minus 1. So it turns out that these two roots here, uh, this obviously there's a minus 3 over 2 and a minus 1. So yeah, again, neglect my origin here. Obviously, the graph m looks more something like this, where this must be uh, minus 1. And this must be minus 3 over 2. So it turns out that the solution set is in between here where that dips below 0, isn't it? Because where this stuff here goes below 0 is all this part in here. So what's that? So that goes below 0 when x is less than minus 1 and greater than minus 3 over 2. But if we look here, it was greater than or equal to, less than or equal to 0. So we can include these. 
because it, they're on the line so they, they can be included and in general take it as a rule when you see less than or equal to used that we, we're, we're going to have less than or equal to symbols or whatever greater than or equal to symbols in our answer so that's our answer for this one here so we had to square out both sides we dealt them with quadratic equations we brought all to the one side we wanted to know where this quadratic was less than or equal to zero i drew a sketch like this i just redrew the sketch to be more accurate to this um, answer and it turns out that this stuff tips below zero in this little section here and we figured out the two points where it tips below zero and those two roots were minus three over two like minus one and a half and minus one so between minus one and below that but above minus one and a half this was our set of solutions for that